So Roger Shagnon, who is <laughs> from Pine Valley, I forgot I had two parts. Oh my gosh, Roger, please forgive me. So I have a little bit of a bio here so you know a little bit about him. Oh, oh, you took me off there, please. So go up here to the, oh, look at that. All right. Okay, so you can take this and get ready. How's that sound? There you go. Take that and get ready, and I'll talk about you a little bit. Okay, so he currently hangs out at Pine Valley. He does teach grades 5 through 12. Uh, maybe you can guess by instruments and whatnot. He is an instrumental music teacher. All right, he is on a committee uh, for technology and personalized learning. Uh, he's very active both as an educator and musician on the East Coast. He does travel as a clinician, studio musician, and wannabe rock star. He is interested in technology and how it applies to learning in an adaptable environment. The tech isn't the thing. The teaching is the thing. The tech is the tool. In his time away from music and stage, Roger is an avid reader, cook, admitted uh, history nut, and boating enthusiast. So welcome, Roger Shagnon. Build anticipation. It's always interesting to me when I walk into a classroom and I have something shiny in my hand that immediately, no matter what kind of fun stuff is going on, I've got their attention. Do I have yours? One of my colleagues has a, has a little uh, sign, very small sign, at the front of his classroom in a, in a high school science room. And it says, if your phones are out, I'm not doing my job. So if you're more worried about your email, don't worry about it. Don't take offense. I'm not going to take offense to that. That means I'm not doing my job. So if you're zoning out a little bit, don't, don't blame yourself. I get it. We all have a thousand things to do. You're probably getting emails right now. Turn off that little ding thing that happens. Turn off the little vibration. And if you, if you synced your email from school to your phone, I feel sorry for you. Because <laughs> if you got that email at 3 in the morning that one time asking, why the heck are you still awake? I'm not doing my job. So today, this morning, um, I had the idea to sing my TIFF talk. So I had this idea to sing my TIFF talk, but then I changed my mind. Okay, so um, if you, <laughs> do I still have your attention? Uh, a 20 minute TIFF talk uh, musical, although I was working on my little box step and my flat ball change would be really, probably after 10 minutes you would hate me. Uh, today I am going to hopefully inspire you, uh, which we all can use a little bit uh, as we've been inspired all day from the TIFF Talks, but it's my inspiration today is uh, when Andy asked me, is that beeping because of me or is that just like the, just the bell, okay, cool. <laughs> Do we need to evacuate? We're okay. Uh, it, and he kind of gave me the wide open, I said, what's a TIFF Talk? So I wasn't sure, he, and he explained, uh, that what, what we were doing, and then I said, well, what would you like me to talk about? And of course he says, anything you want. And I'm like, okay, that is a little bit wide. I like some parameters so I can th flourish inside the box a little bit. Uh, so what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use uh, uh, one thing that you probably have in your pocket right now that a lot of us have heard about for years, but I'm gonna, figure, I'm gonna help you figure out how to implement that pre-K through 12 in the most simple possible way. I'm gonna run my own slides from over here. So if it goes black a little bit, it's because I didn't change my uh, screensaver from running away. And magic. Oh, can we go back to that? Can you, uh, am I over there? Oh, I am. I thought it would be back here. I'm not paying attention. All right, so if students have left school, left school less curious, we failed them. I really feel like uh, I remember very much uh, walking into uh, my, my daughter, who is now 10, about to be 10, oh, um, to her kindergarten classroom. And the first thing I noticed that, that was different between that kindergarten classroom and my kindergarten classroom was no toys. Not no toys, mind you, but I remember being in, in uh, kindergarten, everything was shiny and flashy and colorful and things, and manipulatives, and I could touch all those things. Remember all those really amazing building blocks that were made out of whatever that kind of huge, dense wood was? I think they were redwood. I don't know how they afforded that back in the day, but now you go to the store and you get those, those blocks that are made out of balsa. I don't understand, but those old blocks, that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's one thing that I, I, kind of took me back a little bit. And I felt really sad for my daughter's education as she started this, this thing that I've devoted my life to going, where, where's the joy, where's the inspiration? You're in kindergarten, you gotta figure out how to tie your shoe, what the colors are, count to 100 or whatever they do now and be friends with people. And 
I, I thought, well, where, where's she going to get the inspiration? Where, where does the, the joy of learning come from? Because, friends, I tell you what, the joy of learning is not the thing that's going to catch our, our students anymore because there's way too many distractions out there. There's way too many options for them that the simple, intrinsic fact that we're going to go to school to learn things, to be better at it, for most kids, out the window. So as Amanda was saying earlier, we've got to figure out how to put on the little... Get, get their attention, bring them in at their level. Uh, so if students have left school cur more or less curious, we are failing them. Tech in the classroom. Uh, as we've pushed tech in the classroom in, a, in the positive way over the last really 10 years, I feel like there's still, as you guys know, and I'm kind of preaching to the chorus a little bit here, but some, some teachers and some educators just don't get what that means. Um, it's very sprinkle on top. It's not bottom up. Okay, the technology tends to be the, the frosting, the, the candles, the, the crushed up Oreos on top of the cake. It is not the cake itself. And I'm not saying that we should teach the technology. I'm saying that we should teach with technology so that the students can use that technology. So here's, and we, I think a lot of us, and I'm going to say me too, have tried to really just, like I guess that sprinkle it on top and we failed a few times. So what does that look like when we fail? So when I... Hopefully, I'm not seeing these things in my classroom, um, but I do. And as a band director, they've got a music stand in front of them, and then they've got, uh, obviously, like an instrument or something, so I can't really see what they're doing in their hands, but we can all see that little reflection in the face. And nobody looks at their music and starts playing their instrument like this. If they do, I failed them as well, because I can't breathe like this, let alone try to play a flute. Um, so how do we get this, which is what they want to do, into my classroom because they, so that they can want to do what I want to teach them. That's hard. So we failed along the way. One of the biggest barriers to our innovation is our own way of thinking. I'm a big George Kuros fan. I went to San Francisco on Ed Elements last year and I, I went to their whole symposium and I came out of there more on fire for personalized learning than I've ever been about anything else. It was just one of those things where you just, if, if you like these kind of things, figure out a way to go to Ed Elements. Um, it's in uh, Atlanta next year, which is pretty amazing. So it's going to be on our coast. But it's all about personalized learning. And George Kuros, uh, follow him on Twitter. Look him up. You just do George Kuros uh, and do an image search. You're going to find all these fun little quotes he has. He's really good about that. Um, I sat in a training with him, and he, he, he walked in with 100 educators uh, and administrators. And he sat down, and he goes, I'm not prepared. What do you want to know? And we had the most amazing 90 minutes with him because we just had a lot of back and forth. So if you have a chance to look up George Kuros, please do. Uh, but our big, sometimes it's just the way we think of things. We tend to teach a lot of times how we've been taught. We use those examples. I think about those two or three educators in my life that I want to emulate all the time. And hopefully on a daily basis, I'm catching that. And they're all for different reasons. My, the ideal educator for me is my mom. She taught 34 years in Ripley and as, a, as a junior high, sixth grade teacher. And everything was incredible. And if I can be half the teacher, she was. And she wasn't anything, it wasn't anything to do with technology. She was just one of those old school, down to earth people that would take the kids that didn't know what else wanted. And uh, they started to funnel all the, all the students into her classroom that needed that extra help, that were given problems other places, because when they came out of her classroom, they were changed. So much so that I saw a man at 24 years old, I was probably a teenager, young teenager, maybe in high school, middle school. Uh, I was in Tops which, in Westfield, which I think at the time was Quality Market or ba Market Basket, depending on how far back you go. If you go way back, it was called Bells, uh, man who knows. Um, so, if you, so we came around the corner and there's this huge at the time, I'm probably here, six foot four, or maybe six foot a thousand at the time, I don't care, I was looking up his nose, comes around, gruff gentleman, just what I would think of as gruff, face tattoos, just not looking like he is the kind of person you want to take home to mom, comes around the corner, immediately sees my mom, takes his hat off, stands up straight, says, hello, Mrs. Shagnon, it's been 10 years, and at that moment, I go, that's the power I want in my classroom. Not to tell kids what the 50 states are, not to teach them about Mozart and have them memorize something. I want them to be changed in who they are so that 10 years from now when I see them at the, at the store, they're going to remember that. That was the first thing. He took off his hat because he knows the rules around my mom's classroom, no hats in school, and then had that huge change. And then 10 years later, and he probably walked around the corner and he went back to being whatever he was. Maybe he's the most wonderful gentleman in the world. I don't know. I'm not trying to judge him by his look, but I know his reputation. I know how he was in school, but he was not like that with my mom. So if we can change that, 
Let's use their thinking to do that. So this is what we see. Who needs headphones? We're not using tech properly. This poor guy doesn't need Bose headphones. He's got tape. We're all good to go. We're not quite using it the most effective way possible. Oh, you know that docking station that's in your car? Scratches up your phone all the time? Stop using that, please. It's called a tape deck. We still have some. They're out there. These are literally things I have seen in my life. I didn't just do a Google search. These are things I had to make sure I got real world things, uh, uh, examples that I've seen before. Ah, this is Grandma's Internet Bookmark page. I don't know if you keep your bookmarks like this, but I can't imagine having to write down the URL for whatever that third one is. I mean, come. That, that takes a lot of love. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> if you really love that site, to sit there with that. Oh, really fun. Have you heard about those new cutting, cutting boards from Apple? Those iPod cutting, or iPad cutting boards? Those are great. Uh, thanks, Grandma, for using that iPad as a cutting board. Um, so the technology is not the thing. The, teacher, the teaching is the thing. All right, so what do we want this process to look like? What's the goal? What's the outcome? Do we want product or do we want process? A lot of times we see products, the left side of this. These are all wonderful things that we've probably all talked about in our class or in, to our uh, teachers, to whatever you... Uh, are, the realm that you're in, but it's not about the thing, it's about the learning. It's about the process of learning, and that's what I've noticed in the last 10 years that's really flipped too about um, education is that it's more about the why. We don't care what your syntax is, the paragraph can have all kinds of wrong spelling in it, but do you know the information? That bothers me a little bit because I was really good in third grade spelling and I could win all those spelling bees. Uh, and I'm kind of a stickler for that, but it's not about that. We have spell check. Yes, I think it's important, but it's not about did you get the comma in the right place, or was it there, 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 or there? No, there's only three. There, there, and there. Well, there you go. Pick one. So the product is making Prezi, starting blogs, all these different things, but what are we actually wanting them to do? Is that it's about the doing of that, the process. So finding answers, starting these conversations, and that's my thing. Bloop. Magic. Oh, go back. So it's, it's these conversations, taking actions, driving change. I really feel like anything on the right side of the screen would be something we want all, even your children at home. That's what I want for them. I want, them to, I want to raise their awareness. I want them to have conversations with me about these things. I don't care what form it comes in. I told my kids a long time ago, I don't really mind if you come home with bad grades. No, that's really tough for a teacher to say to a child, I'm trying to be the coolest dad possible. But I'm hoping that they understand that it's about the process of learning, not what's at the top of their page in that red. Even though my, my children do really well and they have a lot of stickers. Um, so technology is just a tool. It's not the learning outcome. And I really feel like if I can leave with one thing, if that hasn't sunk in uh, for you yet, hopefully that's one of those things that you leave here thinking about. So we're meeting the needs of students by meeting them where they're at. Hopefully. Cell phones. I don't know about your schools. Uh, my school has a cell phone policy. Nothing. They're not allowed to use them until it's lunchtime, which is kind of interesting. But here's a question. Now, most of us have laptops out. Magic. If I said right now I'm going to give you $100 if you can tell me what the capital of Ethiopia is, first thing you would grab is this, probably. So why don't we let our students do that? As adults, we do this all day long. You need to do something, again, unless you have your laptop with you, we're doing everything on our phones. What's the one thing in school that we don't let them use? Phones. Why not? Why isn't the conversation more about how about we teach them how to properly use technology? How to properly use YouTube? How to properly use social media? Instead of being like, no, can't use that, stay off social media while you're in school, do it while you're at home, do whatever you want to do at home, but don't do it in school. Until you're 18, and then suddenly you're like, floodgates! What does that look like on the outcome? That freaks me out a little bit. So our job is not to prepare students for something. Our job is to help them, help prepare themselves for anything. And again, if it's all about the product, they're just gonna have a really cool portfolio of stuff. They're not gonna understand the process. They're not gonna be able to do those interconnected kind of things in the, in the communities that we have because our world is not about me as an island anymore. I have to be interconnected. I am interconnected. Everything about us is interconnected. The fact that we're here right now, so the question becomes, what do we do with that? <laughs> Amanda's student interviews were all about, um, a lot, lot of them anyway, talked about what was your most favorite thing? And she kept, the, some of the students kept saying, oh, the, the videos, the tech. I heard the tech. That's what they want to be doing. So let's use that instead of just keeping it out of our classrooms. 
So the goal, well, there we go. Sorry, I'm one, one slide ahead. So the goal is to have, <coughs> with too many options out there, is to figure out a way that we can use what they're wanting to do and sprinkle that at least into what they have to do for us. And that's a hard switch. That's a hard switch, friends. So um, how do we bring a student's avocations into their vocation? What I mean by that is your avocation is what you do with your free time. All right, the things you do when you're on a Saturday afternoon or, or maybe a Wednesday night, who knows, uh, and you have some time to yourself, what do you choose to do with your downtime? A lot of us are probably gonna just chill, put on something and just decompress. I was in the lunchroom yesterday with uh, seven junior high, sorry, the, the faculty room with seven junior high teachers and we had that five minutes of just silence. All of us were just sitting there eating. No one talked, nobody was on their phone. We were all just in shell shock from having to enlighten these middle schoolers on their way to the, the promised land or whatever. <laughs> it was just too much. So the, <coughs> excuse me, I should probably just get some water. So we're trying to empower these students with tech, and we're trying to figure out how to take their avocations into their vocation. I do this with all my senior high kids too in my band. Uh, I have them make a list of what their avocations are. And I teach them like, well, what do you like to do? What's, what's fun for you? And then I try to help them understand that there's a job out there for all that. Because if you're like me and you, you're in a job where you really do enjoy it. Now, to give, don't get me wrong. It's the paperwork I don't like. And if you're with me on that, I'm with you. The emails, the paperwork, the budgets, the having to plan 6, 10, 12 years out sometimes, depending on what you're working on, that's the stuff I don't like. The things that, that resonate with me, I love music. I love hanging out with kids, and I love teaching. Whether it's the fact that I, I grew up in a teacher household, that both my, my parents were teachers, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm a product of my music department back in Westfield where I grew up, which was an incredible music program. Still is. I don't know. But those are the things that resonate with me. And I tell my kids it's a racket, but I get to do that stuff every day and they pay me for it. So what can you find that's interesting to you? What do you like to do? I don't even care. Anything. They can come up with anything. It could, okay. I like picking my nose. Whatever. I guarantee you somewhere, that's the worst example possible, sorry, but, <laughs> but there's probably someone out there that you can Google search up that will pay you to do this. There's probably research about that. I remember on NPR, I was listening to a doctor, this was years ago, I don't tell my children this, but he talked about, and this kind of freaked me out, he lets his children and encourages them to pick their nose and eat it. This is a doctor, a medical doctor. All right, and the whole point of it is that my kids are way too clean, there's way too much antibacterial this and that, I want them to be, inoculate themselves against germs. So he lets his kids sit there and just root around, brain massage, and then down the gullet it goes. Grosses me out a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> He's trying to teach them this. So in, your, in our classrooms, a lot of times, whether you're like me or not, um, my classroom, my, for example right now, seventh grade general music I have right now, of the small uh, classroom I have, 10 students, two of them have a uh, readability that's below first grade. Only one student in my seventh grade general music class can read at a seventh grade level. The rest are somewhere between first and fourth grade. So uh, I have a student teacher right now, and I told her this on the first day. And she said, what do you do? I figure out how to give them a voice, that's what I told her. So where words are gonna fail, I need to figure out a way to give them a voice. Okay, now that's always the music speaks thing, where words fail, music speaks, that's, that's very true. But I'm not expecting them to come up with something and, and write me an opera or anything like that. What I'm expecting them to do is figure out a way to communicate with me, whatever that is. I want, I want to be from them to me, not me to them. And GarageBand is something that if you have an iPhone or if you have anything that's Mac, it's on there. It's probably that app that you just tucked away somewhere and you just like put in the utility folder or something and just tucked it away. Uh, or maybe you like to noodle with it. But something that's been around for a long time, but I tell you friends, it is the most easy, simple thing that you can implement and a lot of you probably, ha or a lot of your teachers uh, or colleagues have this on their phone. A lot of your students have this on their phone. So we're gonna utilize that. Now maybe you're, you're thinking like some of us, like I, Mac is like a swear word, I don't wanna mess with Apple, I think Steve Jobs was insane. Um, which he probably was a little bit, but uh, down here, and this is linked on the website as well, here are three other free PC uh, apps that are basically the same kind of thing. This is called a D Digital Audio Workstation, a DAW or a DAW. 
Uh, the most famous DAW around is called Pro Tools, and if you go to any studio where you're like, like top-end artists are doing uh, music, Pro Tools is what they use. You go to the college, you're using Pro Tools. Uh, so, but that is a really heavy, heavy app application to use. So GarageBand, uh, again, is very deep. You can do a lot of stuff on this, everything from dumping in movies and putting soundtracks to it, uh, to coming up with, an, you can, I know bands that record their entire CD on this, their album. Uh, we're going to take the cream right off the top and make it really simple. One simple thing that we can do every day if we want to. Uh, so as I, as I start to figure out what my students need, and I want to figure out more about them, because again, I want to know the best possible way that I can get information from them. And the more I know about them, the more I can uh, attach my learning or, or somehow footnote my learning into their, their avocations. And I'll, I'll have students fill out those index cards like we all used to do back in the day. The, hey, here's my name, here's my nickname, what do you like, what do you not like? Two reasons for that. One, I just want to know everything about them possible. Okay, if their favorite candy is Kit Kat, awesome, I'm going to use that. Okay, if they like tr uh, monster trucks and country music, sweet, I'm going to use that somehow. All right, but it also lets me understand, like, where's their writing ability? Uh, I can see what their spelling's like. And right away, just in that little 3 by 5 note card, I know who I'm gonna who's going to struggle to give me written answers, to give me the information that a lot of us think is uh, you know, sometimes the only way. So this app uh, is basically, you can use it for a lot of things, but I'm going to use it today just for a simple kind of example of how to use that cream off the top. <laughs> All right. So I, I didn't want to record my entire thing. Uh, I was going to do that and dump it in, but I figured that this might explode my computer if I had all this stuff happening. But right now, just for the sake of it, this is what this kind of looks like. Okay, this is the, the GarageBand app that's open right now. And if I want to, for some reason, do my introduction. OK. Hey, TIFF Talks 2019. Yeah, we're learning about stuff like TIFFs and talks and talks and TIFFs. All right, so there we go. All right, cool. I don't know if you could hear that or not, but there it is. It's coming out through this. Uh, I should have put that through the other thing. Maybe I can change that real quick so you can hear it a little bit more than through my microphone. And that's not what I wanted to do. So uh, there are better apps if you want, like Amanda was saying, like she records a lot of her, uh, or all of her lessons and puts them right up on Google Classroom. There are other ways to do that than this, but if you're someone that has something in your, in, uh, in your pocket and you're not as savvy as that, um, this is another way you can kind of get around that, which is nice. We want this thing to go through there. Let's test it. Do not evacuate. And we are working. All right, well, it's on this. So here I go. I've got audio. Now, that could be, take the form of anything. That could take the form of you just saying, um, OK, Dylan, you don't write very well, or however you want to approach that with Dylan. Uh, Dylan, I want to hear what you have to say, but I know you struggle with writing uh, longhand. OK, can you just take this into the other room real quick and just talk to me about your questions? Give me your paragraph. Give me your insight. Give me your thoughts on this. We just watched a video. We're, we're having a, a share out. Okay, this, this students, or maybe some students are not comfortable sharing that. 30 seconds, boom, email it to me, teach it to them. If you have an iPad in your classroom, it's already on there. You can export it, whoop, right out to uh, the teacher. You can link that stuff with Google Classroom, with Microsoft, it's all right there. Uh, and then let's say I wanted to do something simple like, I don't know, make a radio show or a podcast out of this. I'm just going to, I don't know, let's see, uh, barbecue blues medium, that sounds fun. I like it. We're going to dump that right here. And then my podcast is taking shape. Yes, podcast glory. I'm just going to get real close so you can hear this. So that's the intro to my podcast. I just made a podcast <laughs> live in front of you right there. I can export that. Now, I wouldn't publish that because I have higher standards than that. But still, it's something very simple. You've got a thousand things on the right that you can just drag and drop. It's all loops. 
Kids can manipulate them all they want. Um, and if you're like, oh, this is a new, I don't, Roger, you know what? There's another app. I don't need, I don't need to spit, sit there and take it home with me and sit there and noodle with it. I don't have time for that. I don't have the, the joy in my life to do that. That's fine. Let your students do it. Okay. If you're like me and you can't figure out something tech, I ask my students. I've gone, I've, I've gone past that in my life now. I'm old enough now to say that I can't figure out how to turn some things on. And it's a hard realization to me when the other day I got a new laptop uh, from the school and I was looking at it and I couldn't find the on button. <laughs> and I'm 37 years old and I had to go, I've, I've hit it. I've, this is it. Realization moment, I've lost it. <laughs> and it was, it was a sad thing, but I handed it to one of my students who were like, Shagnon, it's, it's right here. Oh, it's camouflage. Let me get my glasses. I don't wear glasses, but I told them I did. Um, so let your students get into that stuff. Let them noodle around with that. They are more intuitive with, with this, the, the point and click thing than we will ever be. Um, if, you had, if you're ever in a school district that has YouTube blocked, ask a senior high kid how to get to YouTube. They'll tell you how every time. And if you're the person that blocks that stuff at your school, you know what I'm talking about. So we can record lessons, we can do podcasts, we can do introductions, we can do songs in our classroom. We can, we can have songs in our classroom for transition times. Let's make a song with the classroom, let's have them sing something, or even put on a 20 second little thing, uh, you want to listen to a song for 20 seconds, that's how long our transition time is. Boom, put a song in there, you can make it in here real quick. Uh, you can have student-led interviews. I've taken laptops down to the principal's office with some students and they've interviewed the principal for things. I've had them take it to other classrooms and do podcasts in other classrooms live while they're doing things. Um, there's, I mean, the endless opportunities here, but let the students, maybe let them teach us. Flip that classroom that way. Have them do little three-minute spark talks themselves. Teach us about things. Start simple. Start with something that they want to talk about. I don't care if it has to do with ELA, math, science, or music, or art, whatever. Have them come in and just start teaching. Have them get used to standing up in front of people, which is a very uncomfortable thing for a lot of, people, a lot of us. Um, that, that life skill is what we want to teach. Okay, it's not about the information. They can talk about My Little Pony, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, it, it, that's fine. But they're teaching. They're sharing. They're getting up there. They're communicating. They're working through these things. They've had to come up with a presentation. All these skills. Again, the presentation is not the thing. It's all the skills that get us there. So how can we build those skills? So I'm coming down to the end here. But tech, tech will not replace us. We've heard this over and over. It's important. It makes us feel good about life. Tech's not going to replace us. If we can utilize students' avocations to teach them their vocation, which is being a full-time student right now, I believe the learning will be more effective, meaningful, insightful, inspirational. It's going to change the world one look at a time who just suddenly has a voice that didn't have a voice before. GarageBand is a great way to do that. It's simple. It's something that almost every classroom probably has, whether it's in one form or another. Uh, but it's something we can put on any, anything uh, that is tech related. We can put it on computers, iPads, anything you want. It's right there. Now, again, GarageBand is a Mac-based thing. There is no PC for that. If you want to see what those, uh, those other links are, you can jump right on my page, which is linked to the TIFF Talks. Otherwise, thank you so much. Keep the creativity coming. Thank you. Thank you.